Praise the Lord, Living Word Apostolic Church. We'd like to greet you and anyone who may be visiting us for the first time. Let's go ahead and jump right into the Word of God. The book of John, chapter 14, verse 6, says this. Jesus answered and said, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. And this afternoon, I'd like to talk about the greatest message, the greatest message. You see, we as humans, we're always looking for answers. We always want to know everything that we possibly can. And we tend to ask the big questions in life, like what's our destination after we die? What's the meaning of life? But living in this 21st century, we often find that we're left with more questions rather than answers. But I'd like to propose to the, today, church, that the answer to many of our questions are found in the message of Jesus Christ. Jesus said in the book of John, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And when Thomas asked Jesus, how can we know the way? This is the answer that Jesus offered, that he is the answer, because Jesus Christ is our answer. And some of us are like Thomas, or perhaps we know someone like Thomas, who is unsure of their future, who is unsure of what is correct. And someone might ask, how can Jesus be the answer to our problems? How can Jesus be the answer to our questions? Well, Jesus said it very clearly. He said that there is no other way without him. Today, I would like to talk about the message that God gave to the people who are looking for answers. Firstly, Jesus is the way. The book of Isaiah chapter 35 verse 8 says this, and a highway shall be there and a way and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those the wayfaring men, though fools shall not therein. You see, long before we were known as Christians or apostolics, we were known as the people of the way. And Luke uses this term to describe Christians in the first century in the book of Acts, but it wasn't an original term. You see, this term was prophesied by the prophet Isaiah, and it was later fulfilled by Jesus Christ when he said that he was the way. And so the early church became known as the people of the way amongst themselves and amongst others. But this name never really had a good connotation to it because to say that you are of the way means that there is no other way. To say that you are of the way means that there is no other way outside of that way. And this is exactly the message that Jesus Christ preached, that there are not many roads to heaven, there is only one. In fact, the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 13, Jesus says this, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate of destruction, and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. This was a bold and exclusive claim that the people of the way were making. So the primitive church, they would face persecution, and they would be called heretics for their beliefs. They were claiming that Jesus was the way to salvation. Today, there are many religions that claim that all religions are the same, that they all lead to the same place. But Jesus said it very clearly, I am the way. So to say that there are no other ways to heaven than through Jesus. This was a very controversial statement at the time, and it is a controversial statement today. Look at what Paul said in the book of Acts chapter 24, verse 14. But I confess unto thee that after the way which we call which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. Paul was speaking to the governor Felix, and he said, I know that they call us a heresy. He said, I know that we get looked down as a sect, as a cult, but it is not a different God that we serve. It is not someone else that we serve. It is the God of our forefathers, and his name is Jesus. So today, if we ever get told that we are like a cult, if we ever get told that you apostolic people, you guys are a denomination, a sect, you know, a, a cult, you guys are exclusive, well then just know this, that the original primitive church were told the same thing. And if we ever get told that we are just too exclusive because we preach the gospel and that we echo the words of Peter when he said, repent, be baptized, and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, then just know that you are doing something right. 
Because while other people are trying to water down the gospel and trying to exclude things from the gospel, we understand that there is only one way to heaven and that there is only one person that we can call upon, and his name is Jesus Christ. It's the only way. And so we should always remember this, that this is part of our message, that he is the only way to heaven. But secondly, Jesus says, I am the truth. Look at what the book of Titus chapter 3, verse 3 through 7 says. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hating, hateful and hating one another. But when the kindness and the love of God of our Savior toward men appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Church, this is how many of us came to the Lord, being deceived, thinking that we were living lives that were correct and that were right. For some of us, we had been deceived all of our lives. And when we, when we came to the Lord, he began to reveal to us sin. And through the word of God, we began to see just how deceived we were. So when Jesus says that he is the truth, this is what he means. That once we were living a lie, but now because of the message of the gospel that someone shared with us, which is real, we are now living in truth. We cannot stray away from the truth, which is found in the word of God. Today, many people have done just that. It's important to understand that the gospel, it does not work and it doesn't have any effect if it is changed, if it is altered, if we stray away from the truth. It does not have the same effect and it is not what is in the word of God. In fact, look at what the book of Galatians chapter 1 verse 8 says. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel that other than one we preach to you, let them be under God's curse. You see, today there are many religions that start because someone claims to have a visitation from an angel telling them to add or to subtract scriptures. We have to be careful, church, that we don't start believing every philosophy, every idea, every person who says something. Paul warns us about this philosophy in the book of Colossians when he says to not be taken by philosophy and empty deceit. We cannot stray away from the message of God, church. Today, many people try to get away from, from doctrine. They try not to talk about steps of salvation. But I heard many people say that let's just not talk about doctrine and let's just love Jesus. But to, to be honest, even though that sounds right, it's not biblical. It's not the word of God. We can't just believe whatever we want to believe. We have to trust in the Lord and we have to follow the truth. It is the truth. And that is that Jesus, so how can we distinguish the truth from everything else in religion? Look at what the book of 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 says. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. You see, church, there are times in our lives when we don't have to believe every author, when we don't have to see every cute or inspirational post that we see, that there are times in our life when we just have to dive into the word of God and examine all that is true. It's not biblical. If it's not biblical, chances are that it's not true. So we have to understand that everything that it, Jesus is, is true. It's real. It is not a lie. And that he is the one who paid the price for our sins. And it is Jesus who is the truth and is the most dependable source for us. Hold fast to what is good to that message that comes from God. And lastly, I'd like to tell you this, that Jesus is life. To me, this one's the most evident. It's the most apparent to understand. But I imagine that someone that doesn't understand that they are living a life of death, they wouldn't understand that Jesus is life. Look at what the book of Ephesians chapter 2 says. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins which you used to live when you followed the ways of the world and the, and the ruler of the kingdom of the air. The spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient, all of us lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of, the, of our sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive in Christ. 
even when we were dead in transgression. It is by grace that you have been saved. You see, without, without God, we are left to sin. And the Bible says that we are all sin, sinners and the wages of sin are death. You see, perhaps we don't, it doesn't feel like death when we sin, but sin begins to slowly harden our heart and it begins, us, it begins to make us used to living a life that is sinful and the end result of sin is condemnation. You see, the end result of sin is hell. The Bible says that hell, it's a place of darkness. It's a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. That is, that a life without God is one of many suffering. And we don't have to be afraid to share that, church. I know that hell can be scary, but we don't have to sugarcoat things because it is part of our message. And we don't have to live in ignorance to the fact that a person without, or without God is going to hell. Because the overall message is not that our lives are condemned. The overall message is that without God, we are condemned. But that with God, we have everlasting life. That's the gospel. That's the good news. The book of Romans chapter 6 verse 23 says this. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. It is Jesus Christ who came down and became man. It was he who was blameless. And it was he who paid the price for our sin to the, uh, for our sins to the world. It was he who gave us a plan for salvation. And it was he who told his disciples. And it was Peter who said, let every one of you repent, be baptized, and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You see, church, the message that we have, it's all about Jesus. It's all about what he's done for us. It's all about where he calls us. It's all about him. This is why Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. I'd like to end with this final scripture. Romans chapter 1, verse 16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for, it, for in it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Church, we cannot stray away from the word of God, away from the gospel of Christ, because in it is the power to change someone's life to bring people to salvation. Do not, we should not dilute it. We should not ever seek to change it or to add or to deduct something from the message of God because there's not many ways to salvation. There's not different truths. There is only one way. There is only one truth, and that is Jesus Christ, our Savior. Church, let's continue to persist in the gospel of Jesus Christ. At this time, I want to end with a word of prayer. Let's go ahead there where you are. Bow your heads with me. Lord, we come before you and we thank you, Lord Jesus, for all that you do in our lives. We thank you, Lord God, for the gospel that you've given us, God. We thank you for your message, God, that is a message of good news, God. It is a message of salvation, Lord, not of condemnation, Lord. And we just thank you, Lord God, that you've given us this message, that we may go out, Lord, and share this message with all, Lord, in these times that we're going through, Lord God, that we may persist, Lord God, and that we may continue, Lord, to fight this fight, Lord God, that we may continue to share the message that you've given us, Lord. We thank you for all that you do, Lord. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. 